Jam Extreme Music. Wanted to do a video this time on the SFZ Plus plugin. This is, I suppose you could say, inspired by a thread on the Finale Forum recently where a new print music user uh, uh, was looking for advice and a number of us were trying to help him to understand what print music can and can't do. And part of that discussion focused on SFZ+. And as, as I was throwing in my two cents and uh, reading what others were, were posting about it, it made me think of how impressed I was with this plugin when I first discovered this uh, about eight, nine, I guess about ten months ago now. Uh, so I figured I'd do a video here because uh, to hopefully introduce this to people who may not have thought about using sound fonts previously. Because that is where is what this is really intended to do, allow you to use sound fonts in a VST-compatible host. So first of all, what are sound fonts? There's a page for it on Wikipedia. Not surprising, they have a page on almost everything, it seems. Um, but basically, sound fonts are another file format which can be used to... Uh, you know, to hold samples that you can use to create music. Just like there are a number of VSTs out there with varying quality, you're going to get the same thing with sound fonts. Um, so you can't just go out, grab 20 different sound fonts, throw them together into a piece, and expect to have Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. Not going to happen, uh, most likely. Um, but, uh, you know, there are a number of good sound fonts out there. Um, just takes a little looking around, perhaps perhaps a little experimenting to see what works for you and the type of music that you create. So where would you get the SFZ Plus plugin? Cakewalk um, has it for free on their website, download for free. Um, it's also freely available all over the internet. I got mine from soundsforbeats.com. This is free along with a free membership to the site. Uh, so you get the SFZ Plus plugin, and on the site you would also, for, with the membership, you would also get a number of uh, free sound fonts that Genesis has created. So you can start using them in the plugin right away, start testing how the plugin works, and also, of course, get a sense for the quality of sounds you'll get from from his website. Um, so once you have it, once you have the plugin, you have it installed. Obviously, you would need to load it into your uh, VST-compatible host. Uh, one tip for print music users, however, I find that as soon as I load it, I need to drop the volume for that bank of channels down to 40 or 50% right away. I don't know if this is true in other programs, but at least in print music, which is the only place that I use this uh, plugin, needs to be done right away, because otherwise this is an incredibly loud plugin. So once you have uh, the plugin installed, um, how, how do you use it? Well, first of all, just like many VST plugins, this can support up to 16 channels. Here I've only used four. This is from Ascent, by the way. And that only uses four instruments, so four channels. And once you've selected your active channel, you can go to File, click on the blank space next to the, the arrow, and it opens up the standard open file dialog where you can drop down and select the appropriate sound font that you need. I'm going to cancel there because I already have one here. But once you have a sound font loaded then there are banks and programs that might be available to you. Most of the sound fonts that I've uh, encountered online only have one sound in them. But if they have multiple sounds and they'll have additional banks or additional programs that can be selected um, and how those how those are managed will depend on the file uh, if it's a general MIDI sound uh, sound font designed to be a replacement for the general MIDI sound set uh, obviously it'll correspond to that um, I recently bought a sound font from Sonavox uh, their, their saxophone sound font they had four different sax variations in it um, so, so those are each a separate program. So again, it's just going to depend on the sound font that you have. Once you have the sound font loaded into the appropriate channel, then there's you can see a number of uh, controls here that you can 
play with. These all help you to shape the to shape the sound of the sound font itself. The ones that I use most often are attack, maybe the hold, delay, sustain, and release, and same over here. Um, whether you need to modify them or not, how you need to modify them will depend on the sound font sound quality itself, um, the type of sound, um, the piece of music you're working in, and other factors. There's also a couple other things. Each channel has its own volume control here, level. Each channel also has its own effects area, which is only active when this light is on, but it's just standard chorus and reverb. Uh, fairly standard, but fairly effective. What I find most useful here, though, is options. If you click on options, you get several other things you can, you can modify. But most useful, in my opinion, are save program file and load program file. And this will load and save the settings across all 16 channels of the plugin. So let's say you've been tweaking some of the settings, you like what you have, but you think that you might be able to tweak it a little bit more. So you save your settings, do a little additional tweaking, you decide you don't like it, at least you can roll back to where you were when you're at a point where you liked what you had. So you're, so you're not going to lose a lot, of, a lot of work. You're not going to have to keep a lot of extensive notes on paper as to what the settings were for each channel. So very useful in that respect. Um, now, in terms of where to find sound fonts, uh, again, I've mentioned uh, SoundsForBeats.com quite a few times. Uh, I also mentioned Sonavox, where uh, this is the company that I bought the uh, the Sax sound fonts from recently. Also, do a Google or Yahoo search for free sound font. You're going to find a lot out there. Or even if you do just sound font, you'll find other places that are uh, selling sound fonts for free. But uh, anyways, that's a quick overview of the SFZ Plus plugin. I find this very indispensable, both because this opens up the universe of available sounds that I can use. So I'm not just limited to what comes with print music. I'm not just limited to the VST offerings in general. I can also tap into sound fonts and use them as well. Um, in addition, for the way that I work, this allows me to use sound fonts in print music because I try to do as much as I possibly can in print music. That's just me. Uh, that may not work for other people, uh, especially if you're using a, a DAW for just about everything, obviously. Um, and and also, it, I, I find that sound fonts, there's such a wide variety of what's available out there it's a little bit easier and certainly cheaper <laughs> to get those than many of the the VST compatible plugins that are out there um, this just works for me I would say 60 percent at least of the music that I create uses at least one sound font if not if not a majority of sound fonts within each piece uh, for example the goddess project Virtually all the sounds there are sound fonts, uh, primarily from uh, soundsforbeats.com, actually. So anyways, uh, I strongly suggest getting SFZ+, Plus, ex exploring with it, uh, and see how it might be able to, uh, to impact the way that you make music. J-M-S-Free Music